everyone and good afternoon. I'm more than happy to run you through today through our complete new site speed site setup, which is running since last week. Um, and quite easily, uh, I want to do a couple of uh, uh, show you some hints in there, what you can actually see in there and how to research stuff and how to use that stuff. Um, as we overall definitely have the topic of that we are really interested on uh, getting all the engineers uh, closer to the code when it's running production. So this means really that uh, so that uh, front end engineers don't have like a dashboard envy uh, because uh, back end engineers have way more dashboards. Uh, it was really clear that site speed should uh, or that front end also gets really good front, uh, dashboards that are usable and that can give you really good insight on how our stuff is running out there and how it is performing on the different areas that we have, as we have done in the past, a clear vision on where we want to improve and how we can improve. And exactly for that, we have a complete new site speed setup. We already had one that was running for some time, uh, but uh, then the Kubernetes cluster gave uh, went KO because it was a little bit site speed uh, demand was getting bigger, but the memory was getting uh, smaller. So uh, uh, the Kubernetes cluster basically exploded. And so I said, yeah, let's get uh, a new site speed uh, set up running. Yeah, let's dive into it. So I will share my screen with everyone. And here we go. So let's get started with a basic dashboard. So what we have is everyone should have access to Grafana uh, through their uh, Google login. Uh, so you should be able to access this uh, straight away. Um, the setup that we currently have is quite simple. We have one site speed machine that is running site speed monitoring. Um, so every two hours, a full run through is done and currently only with Chrome, uh, targeted at desktop and mobile. Um, so we have different URLs that we are monitoring there and testing. Um, I have opted out from Firefox at the moment because it's simply using more memory. The machine had a little bit more of hiccups uh, running those. Uh, so I said uh, stability first and uh, Chrome anyhow gives us so many numbers right now, but it's quite easy to, to reactivate also Firefox in the long run. Um, all the data that is produced there is um, uh, used in two ways. So site speed in general creates a report a really, really, really nice report, including all the metrics, uh, all the uh, 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 points that we should change, that we should improve. I will get into that stuff into detail. They are recording slow motion videos, film strips. They are measuring everything from different sites. What we also have activated is a Lighthouse running in SiteSpeed itself. So there's like a Lighthouse plugin. So you have also all the Lighthouse numbers in there from the classic Google monitoring solution. We are running all the measurements also currently over Google PageSpeed Insight so that we get like a, another data point from another um, uh, data center, which definitely also helps on having consistent numbers. And yeah, everything from there is stored in a report that is put onto Google Cloud Storage that is public ava publicly available that everyone can access and take a look at all the data from each and every run. Uh, and all the data is saved to a graphite database and the graphite database basically is queried by uh, Grafana and uh, the three different dashboards that we currently have in place. There is a fourth one provided by SiteSpeed itself. It doesn't work right now. I didn't have time so far to take a look at it. It's the leaderboard uh, dashboard, which simply gives you an overlook uh, uh, overview of all your different pages and which are running better and which are running not so good, etc. And hopefully we'll get this fixed also in the next couple of weeks. Um, let's get started. So we have, uh, as said, we are currently running two environments. One is desktop and another one is emulated mobile. Um, we are running it against three different domains uh, at the moment. Uh, so this means uh, we are running it against gitlab.com, which is really our main monitoring target. Uh, we are running it against dev GitLab org. There we are only running the public available pages as we don't have any login script at the moment, which is possible. It's also possible by now to really measure really nicely uh, single page applications for site speed. And we are running it against a couple of uh, pages from our homepage simply to uh, track that a little bit. The team page, the high book start page, our homepage. Uh, and I think that's it at the moment. 
Um, we are also looking into uh, extending that for Gitter. And please, everyone, feel free. I think we shouldn't overload it with too many URLs, but there is only a limited set of URLs right now in the system. But please feel free to also add some more. Uh, so if some of your areas have like a URL that you also want to monitor, it's quite easy to, to add it also to the URL list. Uh, it's getting automatically picked up into the process again in the next run. And then you should also see statistics quite soon. I will get to that at a later point. Um, yeah, and then we are running really a couple of pages. So take, let's take a look at the most important one, which is gitlab.com. And there you have then all the different pages that we are currently monitoring. There is one um, thing, which is the single code base, because of course all the URLs changed. So we have a couple of runs, which were running still against uh, the CE URL. So that stopped working <laughs> on Friday when I changed it to the new URLs. And I will have a look that we delete them simply from the database so that it's not too many URLs and it's not too confusing overall. Um, my base page that I always take a look at because it's quite simple and simply in whatever is happening on the front end is the explore page because in, in reality it's only rendering a list. Um, so you get a good overview of all the scripts that are running in general and on each and every page and they are quite nice to measure. Um, as said, you can have a complete detailed view on, uh, um, on site speed IO, what all those numbers mean and you have, they have really great insights. Um, I will simply have a, a quick run through. So you have uh, on the page summary here, uh, the visual metrics. So the, the bottom line is basically the first visual change. So the first thing that happened on the page and the upper one is uh, the last visual change. So you know what time frame actually the page is also taking until you see the first thing and until uh, the last thing is uh, rendered and loaded. You have not only the, the changes, but you have also the whole CPU uh, numbers you have also in there. There is even the possibility to take uh, flame charts and run them through uh, Chrome debugger. So you could really run back and go into each function which is running how much CPU. Um, you have again a couple of metrics. Uh, here you also have uh, nice tooltips which explain all the different numbers and how they get to those numbers. You see visual trends, uh, so you see trends over all the different runs. We are only running since last week, so there's not too much uh, visible at the moment. And then you have more of the numbers. Uh, first of all, what is our score? So currently we have a performance score on the Explore page of 66. Uh, overall, it's 100 is the maximum. So accessibility is not too bad. Best practices are also quite good. Privacy is also quite good. And um, uh, you get also those numbers. And what I'm trying to measure right now is, a, is the so-called uh, uh, speed index, which is like an average number of when you have the feeling that something is done for the first time and the page feels okay-ish. But the main number that we also want to improve definitely is the performance score because it, this is really mapped against all the different parts of rendering. Um, you can dive into this in super detail and it's super interesting. Um, you see that is also something that we should be able to uh, follow nicely is that if we are really decreasing the different parts of JavaScript, CSS, et cetera, we should really see some curves that are going down. And for everyone that is already long at the company, perhaps you can remember at the beginning when we were running uh, site speed, especially still in the Azure times, this felt like a very nervous heart patient. So then the graph was going up and down without any deployment, without any change to anything, but simply the infrastructure and everything that was under load was way more hectic. Now it looks a little bit way more stable and that should give us also better insights on when we improve something that we actually see something that is dropping and that's what we have, where we want to get to. Again, more numbers, more numbers and more numbers. Um, I will uh, show you one thing, which is from my perspective, the biggest improvement here is if you have activated the runs uh, toggle, I think it's even by default, then you can run over all the annotations. And in the annotations, you can click on results. And this brings you to the full and detailed report in SiteSpeed. So this is really the run from uh, today. So that's really the last one that was running today against the explore page on gitlab.com. We are doing always free runs so that we get better measurements and no big uh, max and min and median, et cetera. So you can also have a look at that. You can um, have the waterfall. So this helps really on figuring out how are we doing actually on static content. So 
this is, I think, something where we should be quite uh, good at figuring out also API changes and things like that. Um, metrics, there you see the different uh, jumps. So if when was the real first visual uh, change, when are then the others happening, how much time do you have between those, all the different numbers that are coming out of, uh, of, of Chrome. There is also something that we are looking into is what we currently have in the performance bar. Um, there is a standard for Chrome that you can send all your, um, your numbers on the server side into HTTP headers. So you can say, okay, we had 75 database requests and they took uh, 1,200 milliseconds, et cetera. And all the data that would have been recorded on the backend then goes out into HTTP headers and then can be shown here. So you can get in reality a full request uh, timing. So getting from the first, okay, HTTP is hit and how many database requests did we have, how many fidelity requests, et cetera, et cetera. When was the uh, backend really sending something out, et cetera. So we should be able to have not only just front-end monitoring, but really the full package in here. Um, again, more numbers, really awesome stuff. One of my favorite things is the uh, slow motion video. So you have a video which is used for measuring uh, the different numbers. So what uh, SiteSpeed does is it records actually Chrome and then takes a look how often and where does stuff change. And based on that, it really measures how fast the page is actually loading. And there you can get some good insights for the videos. Let me open up another one. Because here we have the overview. Because uh, I think that shows it quite well is that if you take a look at our boards page, you have a really fast first visual change, which is just one second, which is okay-ish, but the fully loaded is at 12.5 seconds. And if you take now a look at the video, then you will most probably see the same as I've seen in the past, is that uh, loading the second column fast-ish, third one already takes much longer, but really the main problem is the first one. So perhaps we should figure out how to improve really the first query and how can we improve that part or that we even prioritize on the board, hey, let's load that, uh, that data earlier so that you already have the feeling that not only the board is there, but that also the data is showing up uh, faster because you have quite some gap between the 3.5 stuff is showing until stuff is really doable with 12.7 seconds in that run. Um, so that is really useful in that case. You have also film strip where you can show uh, different screenshots and can take a look at each of the different steps. Coach, which is really one of the most interesting parts and one of the first things that we will really try to tackle there is the images again. Um, not again, but get this really done also on gitlab.com. On the self-installation, it already improved uh, nicely, but we also need to get this going on gitlab.com. So we have tons of advices and performance advice already that SiteSpeed can give us. We have page X-ray, which goes around the assets, which are the bigger ones, which are the smaller ones, et cetera, CPUs, third party, which is currently everything that is happening on the CDI, CDN. Then, as I said, we also run the Lighthouse plugin inside of SiteSpeed. So you have always of another run, which is the full Lighthouse run with all the advice, et cetera, um, and Google PageSpeed insights that we also run. Yeah. And that I would say is a lot of information that we can definitely use. Take a look at the different parts of your different areas. Take a look at the data, try to figure out what does all those numbers actually mean. Um, I think we have a couple of real performance experts on the team and more than happy to do them also in detailed uh, uh, sessions. I think what, what we want to get to overall as a company right now is in this DevOps buzzword. Uh, that everyone is really more aware of something is merged. How is it running out there in production? This is not something that backend needs to do or frontend needs to do. This is a combined thing. There are some things that we can simply make faster that no one has a visibility around. And sometimes you just need the, the classic magic tricks that you increase the perception of speed and that people have the feeling that this thing is faster uh, by exactly loading first the first column and then after that load other columns so that everything that is actually visible is feeling much faster and compared to the other things. And I think this should give really all the different product areas uh, some really nice insights and let's, let's make this stuff faster. Um, last but not least, there are also some other dashboards which also go into more details and have also all the same numbers that you have seen 
um, over in the full report, again against uh, around the speed index and the different numbers. Um, what is also quite interesting is uh, da, 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 when you go in here, and this is the uh, repository around it. So this is basically our super basic setup. This is the same setup that SiteSpeed is doing. I have simply moved it around a little bit and made it, made it work with GitLab. Um, everything is running in there. You have all the links to the documentation and it's super easy to add stuff. So if you just want to add um, a URL to the desktop run, then you go into desktop URLs. You have a TXT file and you add your URL and we do, or not, SiteSpeed does inverse CI, I call it. They simply, every time they run the loop, they do a git pull and basically get everything from this repository in there uh, on the txt file. So as soon as you have simply added one of those lines in there, uh, it should all automatically pick up and after two hours it should come up and show up also in the Grafana dashboard. So please, please, please add your stuff there from your areas to help you also get a numbers there. Um, as said, one last thing, we also have the emulated mobile. So this is really emulating also different speed and different CPU stuff, etc. cetera. Um, we have tons of more site speed. Uh, if someone wants to dive into the documentation, site speed has a really good documentation and it adding, is adding really constantly new features. Yeah, feel free to uh, own this and uh, add features or configurations that hopefully then also work. But uh, let's extend this to exactly what we need for gitlab.com. Yeah, that's it, I would say. Do we have any questions uh, in here? Do, 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 do. I, I have a question. Um, so some of those numbers are like just showing the big, big fat number. Um, yeah. How would you want us to compare those over time, specifically like pre and post a specific deployment we're interested in? And kind of a follow up, maybe there's a deployment we should be interested in. Like how do we, can we get a warning like if some of these are going yeah. higher than we really would like? Um, so I, I think there are two things. First of all, what we have done in the past is simply I, I did run the, all, all those things on my private digital ocean machine. So what I simply did is now I copied really old, the oldest reports that I could find over to our current one and I compared them already. So we made progress on it. Um, if you take a look at the handbook link, uh, oh, I want to paste. Uh, so if you take a look here, then you have also the run from 2018. Uh, so you can take a look at the full site speed report from back then. And there's only one page at the moment that actually decreased performance. Um, this is most probably a database query, so it's not even that front end relevant. We, you also have all the links to all the different dashboards and the links if you just click on the tachometers here. And here I simply compared the site speed index, speed index from back then to now. Overall, um, I would say this is one of the numbers. So back then we said, okay, let's figure out one number that is like a um, executive summary so that uh, Sid can go in and have a look and he's really looking at those dashboards uh, is what is a number that we can actually track to get started. Overall, I think there are tons of different numbers and there's tons of different things that give you the uh, different perceptions of speed simply. Yes, it's it, the first step is definitely get something on the screen, but as we saw you know, on the boards, for example, if you then are looking at the loading screen uh, for ages, which is 10 seconds, then of course you will have the understanding, hey, this is still super slow. Perhaps sometimes you will even have more the feeling of, hey, this is super slow. Um, and I think that that is the, is the real target that you set some real goals how where you want to go. So if you are going in there and say, okay, we definitely want to, to change something on performance and improve something, then take a couple of numbers that are super interesting for you and tackle those and, and run those. You can also run site speed. It's super easy locally. With a Docker, it at least gives you some numbers and you should be able to some extent to take some of the things out and, and run it over there. Overall, I think we have tons of global work to do. Images, uh, the package size, the JavaScript package size is huge. There are a couple of things getting hopefully rid of font awesome at some point, CSS to increase it. Yeah, so there are tons of global, but if you're going into specific, mark your numbers first and then compare them. Another thing is uh, we have, SiteSpeed is also part of GitLab itself, 
right now, and I've discussed this uh, actually on, on Monday with Mac uh, around quality, we have site speed runs against MRs. We already have site speed as part of GitLab, but it only takes one number. And it's okay, it's one number that can give you an up and down and can give you some indication if this is bad or uh, worse. But the real important part is also this, this um, uh, the actual run so that you go, can go in and see the waterfall, that you can see the rendering, because this gives you actually the insight, is this thing really fast or slower, or was this just bad connection, bad CPU memory, whatever. You can get lab settings, and I tried that really with the VM, uh, but uh, that is one of the next steps about dog fooding that we get more and more and can hopefully get also get access to the actual site speed report inside of the GitLab MR site speed feature. So there is like a, a classic combination. This is everything that we need right now. And then there's the classic dog fooding effect to, to GitLab. Cool, um, thanks. Yes, uh, thanks, Mark, first of all. Uh, and Sam, yes, you can. There is um, extensive documentation around. They have put like a, um, their own API on top of some Selenium uh, uh, protocol. So you can go in, you can code even full single page applications. You can do like in reality, not just performance monitoring in the sense of classic network and loading monitoring, but you can actually also monitor a single page application against CPU and stuff like that. So that is also possible in a run. If you take a look at the site speed page, um, there is a section uh, which is all around the configuration. And there you have also descriptions not only on the single page application, which is this part uh, where you can simply say, okay, I want to click something, then I measure again, I click something, I measure it again. Um, but there is also to, 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 to pre-post scripting. So this is basically giving you the possibility to, to run a script before you run your, do your run, which can simply generate, do a login. There's also the login example uh, that can get you a token, uh, whatever you need, like a login token. So you, there are, I think there are a couple of possibilities to get your user login, but yes, it, it should be possible. It, I imagine it's not as simple as just adding the URL to that text file in this case then. There is an example I have deliberately, currently have scraped them all away, but there is, uh, if you take a look, do, 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 if you take a look at the repo, and I'm way over time, I'm a little bit sorry about that, but if you go into, do, 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 based, that's the dashboard, how site speed runs that stuff. And they have a little bit of a more complex uh, setup. So they have on desktop also something that is called scripts folder and they have a login into Wikipedia example. And you just need to add like the folder and like four lines in the, in the script uh, in the dash script that is actually running the loop uh, and off you go. But Thanks Tim. Thanks. This is, this is, this is amazing. I'm, I'm very excited about this. Awesome. Yeah, then if there's nothing else, then I'm sorry about taking too much time, but uh, thanks all everyone. Uh, and